Portugal is home to many different and wondrous things to see and do. In spite of the rather small population, just over 10 million people, Portugal offers natural beauty, vibrant cities, and plenty of historical culture to enjoy. I want to make a top 10 list, in no particular order, of the best places in Portugal. Portugal has great weather, and with that, there are beaches, vineyards, and mountains to explore. Across the country, remnants of the Moors, the Romans, and more can be found tucked away just around the corner in each town you visit. It was difficult choosing our top 10, and I'm sure there are some things that could claim spots on the list that I've left out. Let us know in the comments what you would have added. Bom dia. Have you ever dreamt of moving abroad, wondering how you could do it, and whether such a big change was worth it? Then you have found the right channel. With people constantly looking for their next adventure, we want to show the adventure we've embarked on so others can learn from our journey. I am Alan. My wife Leslie, son Wolf, and I are from the Midwest in the United States. Now we live on the beautiful island of Madeira, Portugal, one of the greatest adventures of our lives. Subscribe to learn from our journey as you work to navigate your own. It'll be fun. Vicer Divertido. Starting out, we begin where one might expect for our first spot on this list, the Lisbon Old Town. Lisbon, as a city, is known for being the capital of Portugal, of course, and also its mix of college town, vibrant city life, and old historical buildings. What we chose from Lisbon for this list is its history and the charm of the old town. Riding up the side of the hill in a bright yellow tram. Atop the hill is some of the oldest parts of the town. As we wind our way through the old streets, we see Roman ruins tucked away just outside of a coffee shop and think about how much of a shame it is that fires and earthquakes take such interesting things away from us all the time. Of course, making our way to the top, we find a keep and learn a great deal about the history of this hill. It turns out that every civilization to come to the area is built upon this hill, close to the coast and easily defensible. Fascinating. Catching the train from Lisbon, we head out to Sintra for the second on our list of top 10. The Moorish Castle, a beautiful remnant of history and a beautiful site in general to visit. The castle isn't the only thing to see when you visit, with beautiful grounds to walk through. Though don't let that distract you, the site you are here for is the gorgeous colorful castle perched atop this large hill. When we went in, it was absolutely stunning, stepping through room after room of history, learning about the ties to the rulers of the past to step out and overlook the lands below. Are you ready to move abroad? We are here to help. Please join us on Patreon and hop on over to our website and stay up to date by signing up for our newsletter at www.it'llbefunretirement.com. For number three, we'll hop up to Porto, where we decided that the Douro River and all the amenities, wineries, and tours make for an unforgettable experience. Porto has a lot to offer, and surely the Church of Gold would take our top pick, right? But no, there is something just so memorable about sitting by the riverside, just to the side of the beautiful bridge, looking across the way as tour boats and lively stalls bustle with people. It's nice to enjoy a tour of a winery, ride the cable car down, and enjoy a cost-effective wine tasting and a snack in the middle of a trip to the lively city. And for number four on our list, we hit up this very same river to the Douro Valley. Number four is the Douro Valley Vineyards, making for an amazing landscape to tour and wine so good that the house wines at small sandwich shops put some bottles to shame. In our case, we love to drive, so we ride into the valley winding down the side of the hill as we enter. The food is great, the views are fantastic, and there is lots to do, from river tours to old road drives to tour any one of the many vineyards. Of course, being all about the wine, you have to be willing to drink, but the trip would be enjoyable all the same, ending off with a leisurely boat ride back to Porto. Now, let's step away from the mainland 
and talk about number five, the Fanal on Madeira Island. Madeira Island as a whole could fill this list. However, we decided to limit it to two on this list. The first is the UNESCO World Heritage Site, the Fanal. In our opinion, this should be towards the top of many lists for the best places in Europe, simply because of its historical importance. The Fanal is the largest remnant of the Lower Silva Forest in Europe, which was once the forest that covered the continent. It was cut down for wood over the years until very little remained. On Madeira, these 400 plus year old trees speckle the top of the island. Some days the plateau is covered in clouds, others it seems like you can step out and walk on the clouds, and other days it is as if the whole world is cleared up. The views are fantastic every time. Madeira Island has so much that people love. However, we will stick with the mountains for the number six spot on this list. If any one hike would make it on this list on its own, it would have to be PR1, the peak to peak hike. This hike travels between two of the highest peaks on the island and an all of Portugal for all that matters, making for stunning views all around. The hike is doable for anyone inclined to hike in spite of the steepness. The mountaintops make for excellent spots to view the sunrise as well, allowing for a day that starts with a mountaintop sunrise looking down over the valleys and across the ocean before you then walk along the ridge and down between the mountains before climbing back up again. Number seven, Porto Santo, the little island getaway. Now, I have to admit, this is a biased list only because we have included Porto Santo. Porto Santo, with only 5,000 inhabitants, is a fantastic getaway island with a two and a half hour ferry ride from Madeira. The island has a nice long wide golden sand beach and several small mountains. Almost desert like, the island is perfect for a short trip to enjoy the beaches and hike up to its surprisingly beautiful views. Portugal is no stranger to beautiful beaches. However, the sheer quaintness, and given that we live on Madeira, gives this beach a spot on the list. Heading back to the mainland, we have number eight on the list, the Oceanside Caves along the Algarve coast. Here we come to the Algarve. For the spot after the beach, well, even if I said we chose Porto Santo to fill the beach slot, we didn't say it was the only beach. The Algarve's coast is a very popular place to visit in general, whether you consider it a place for snowbirds or not. A big part of that is the unique beaches all along the coast. The coastline is full of small caves with lovely beaches tucked into each one. Some beaches are only accessible at low tide, making for secret getaways for a date undisturbed until the tide pulls back out. Of course, we view them all by boat, so perhaps not so undisturbable. Staying in the Algarve, you can walk along the cliffside promenades to a new beach every day, throw a towel out and relax before eating good food, going home and doing it all over again the next day. For our ninth spot on this list, we go to Avora. Known for being the capital of the region, as well as having the Church of Bones, Evora is a beautiful town, always bustling with tourists. We have placed Evora on this list as an excellent place to visit as part of the other trips throughout Portugal and for the adventure of traveling to Evora in the first place. Evora has great history, good food, and plenty of things to see and do. Last on our list for the day is Obidos. Obidos, the walled city is a small city north of Cascais, which is already a city some may have on their list. The small walled city in itself is the spectacle. Old streets line the inside of the hilltop city, which is prevented from growing larger by the old walls that make it famous. On a visit to Obidos, you can enjoy great views, excellent food, and even stay in one of the many Airbnbs throughout the town. After walking a ring around the wall, you can feel how special this place is that it was never torn down to expand. And with this, 
we come to an end of our list. Sure enough, I can already think of things that are missing on the list, but that's all right. It just means there will be more to talk about later. I hope you have a wonderful day. Have a good one. And até próxima. Our Moving Abroad program is coming soon. Let us know what we can help you with. Our programs, Patreon, and affiliates are how we support this channel. They are located in the description of our videos as well as on our website and Patreon. We'd like to take a moment to thank all our Patreon supporters. Your financial support is truly appreciated, allowing us to create new content. We hope you continue to come along with us on our new adventure. Please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to help us grow. The next stage in your life is a journey.